TARDIS, Bessie, the machine that goes ding, the Doctor has utilised countless devices over the decades, and the sonic screwdriver has been a constant almost from the beginning. It can fire off laser beams, blow stuff up, and double as a marker pen? Okay then. But there's so much more to this almighty gizmo than you might have realised. I'm Ellie with Who Culture, here with 10 secrets of the sonic screwdriver you need to know. Number 10. It's not as powerful as you think. The most common criticism levelled at the Sonic is that it's too strong, that it can get the Doctor and their crew out of any spot no matter how implausible. Stuck in a room? Screwdriver. Being attacked by a robot? Screwdriver. Need to whip up a three-course meal in ten minutes before your in-laws arrive? Well, not that this has ever been confirmed in the show, but the answer is still probably screwdriver. It's not the all-powerful device that many people think it is, though. There have been plenty of moments that have cut the metallic legs out from under this seemingly faultless gadget. In Bad Wolf, it's meant mentioned that the Sonic can't open the deadlock seal attached to the door of the Big Brother house. Deadlock seals would return in School Reunion, The Time of Angels, and others, and have proved to be the Sonic Screwdriver's greatest enemy over the years. Well, those and something else as well, but we'll get to that later. The Sonic can't open the TARDIS doors from the outside if they've been manually locked, as demonstrated when the Master did so in Utopia. And most bizarrely of all, the Tenth Doctor once revealed that his trusty screwdriver doesn't work in the presence of some hair dryers. If only the Daleks had hair to dry. They'd have stopped the Doctor centuries ago. Number 9. They weren't all original builds. Though it's undergone several rebrands over the years, the Sonic has always maintained the same basic design. A pocket-sized metallic cylinder with a button on the side and some sort of glowy thing at the end. Sounds about right? Yeah. So you might be surprised to learn that despite having such a simple template, the Doctor Who team hasn't always brought it to life from scratch themselves. Take the third Doctor screwdriver from the 1970s. A longer looking shaft, stop it, with a yellow bit in the middle and a thin circular shape sitting on top is quite a unique look for the Sonic, and that might be because it was cobbled together from two props from an entirely different outlet. The BBC had bought a load of stuff from the recently defunct Century 21, the company behind Jerry Anderson shows like Thunderbirds and Joe 90. The third Doctor's Sonic was made from two items. The main bit was a recycled prop from the 1966 film Thunderbirds Are Go. Thunderbirds Are Go! <laughs> Sorry. While the transmitter on top was another recycled prop from an episode of Captain Scarlet. I mean, that's pretty cool, huh? Also, I know that they're completely different films and they're decades apart, but in researching this, I now have the busted Thunderbirds Are Go song stuck in my head from the early 2000s. You're welcome, you can all have that stuck in your heads as well now. Number 8. It works via psychic interface. The Sonic Screwdriver is basically magic. It can do pretty much anything you want it to with the press of a single button. How does one little device do so many different things? Seriously. Well, while the answer to this has never been expressly stated outright, it was sort of revealed in a throwaway line in the Series 6 episode Let's Kill Hitler. With the 11th Doctor, Amy and Rory in Nazi Germany pursuing a recently regenerated River Song, the best character ever, the Sonic ends up in the hands of Mrs. Pond, who is sucked into the Tess Elector along with Rory soon after. While attempting to use the Sonic against the Tesselector's antibodies, Rory tells her that it has a psychic interface and that you should simply point and think to ward off their attackers. In other words, the Sonic reads the mind of its user and does exactly what they're thinking. Fry some bacon, tune a guitar, turn regular glasses into sunglasses… ugh. The possibilities are ridiculous! Now let's be honest, this is clearly a massive cop-out to get around the Sonic's endless uses, but at least it's a cop-out that makes a certain amount of sense in-universe. Number 7. The 14th Doctors is the ultimate Sonic. The ultimate Sonic. There's plenty to be excited about whenever a new Doctor comes around, and the chance to gawk at a new version of the Sonic Screwdriver is one of the most tantalising. Before Shooty Gatwa gets his fabulous hands on a version of his own though, David Tennant will have another stint as the screwdriver's owner. And what a screwdriver it is! As explained in Doctor Who magazine, the 14th Doctor's new bling pays homage to just about every single previous version of the beloved prop, with a few other surprises to boot. The cracked texture in the middle is a nod to the 9th and 10th Doctor's Sonic, the four prongs that prop out of the casing are a callback to Matt Smith's, and the Master's laser screwdriver even gets a shout out too, with the silver slash gold bit at the bottom. And the Easter eggs do not stop there. Oh no no no. The top part was designed to resemble a Dalek cannon, while the small circles next to the prongs are a nod to the roundels inside the TARDIS. Now considering that 14 is going to be around for the 60th anniversary specials, it makes sense that his weapon of choice should celebrate his most iconic enemies, as well as his previous forms. Is it a 
a weapon? Hmm, there's a question for you. In the comments, let us know. Can the sonic screwdriver be considered as a weapon or not? Number 6. Ace's Sonic Screwdriver Plenty of characters have wielded a sonic screwdriver or a variation thereupon over the years. There's the aforementioned laser screwdriver, Miss Foster's sonic pen from Partners in Crime, and who could forget good old Sarah Jane and her sonic lipstick. These are fine and all, but what about some examples from Classic Who? Any non-Doctor Sonics out there? Well, yes, there very nearly were. In the 1989 serial Battlefield, companion Ace was supposed to be given her own newly constructed sonic. This may have acted as a precursor to her becoming a Time Lord in training, a plotline that would have materialised had the show not met its end later that year. For whatever reason though, Ace's screwdriver was axed from the story's final plan. So, out of all the Doctor's companions, doesn't Ace seem like the perfect choice to be given one of her own? With her bash first, ask questions later attitude, it would be fun to see her wielding a weapon like the Sonic. Again, is the Sonic a weapon? But considering she's now a player in the new Hooniverse after the power of the Doctor, maybe now is the time to do what Battlefield didn't. Number 5. The Sonic Variations Speaking of alternate Sonics, the three we just mentioned are merely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the insanely wide array of Sonic devices that have appeared in the show over the decades. The Sixth Doctor once wielded a Sonic Lance, which he used as a weapon against the Cybermen. There's the Eleventh Doctor's Sonic Kane from Let's Kill Hitler, and then perhaps the most divisive one of all, the Twelfth Doctor's Sonic Sunglasses. Ugh. Some people love them, some people hate them. You decide for yourself, I think you can tell how I feel about them. And all this is without even mentioning the Sonic Modulator built by Tosh in Torchwood, or Missy's Sonic Umbrella, and who could forget old Amy Pond's Sonic Screw- uh, no, Sonic Probe in The Girl Who Waited, or River Song's Sonic Trowel in The Husbands of River Song. There's also a Sonic suitcase in the Expanded Universe which just begs so many questions. They might get a bit silly at times, but there's still something so joyous about seeing a variant crop up. Let's just hope no writer ever decides to invent the Sonic underpants, cause that might just cross a line. Number 4. It originally didn't exist. Imagine a world where the sonic screwdriver never became a thing. Think about how many classic moments wouldn't have happened, how many scrapes the Doctor would have got stuck in, and how many toys wouldn't have been sold. Oh, the horror! As it turns out though, you don't need to imagine too hard as this was very nearly the case. The script for 1968's Fury from the Deep initially called for Patrick Troughton's second Doctor to use a regular old screwdriver to inspect the metal box attached to the pipeline. But when production assistant and later Doctor Who director Michael Bryant saw this, he decided that it was too boring. Bryant pitched the idea of a special tool that operated using sound waves, and so visual effects designer Peter Day created a new bit of hardware to add to the Doctor's arsenal. Thanks to one crew member and their great suggestion, one of the most recognisable pieces of Who mythology was born. This story gets even weirder when you find out that Troughton didn't even use this new prop for the episode. He kept dropping the screwdriver due to some cold weather, so the whistle from Deborah Watling's life jacket was used instead. Oh, so Simpler times, eh? Number 3. Why it doesn't work on wood There you go, you didn't think we'd miss this important fact, did you? In Series 4's Silence in the Library, Donna asks the Tenth Doctor to use his sonic screwdriver on a door. He replies that he can't because it's made of wood. Thus began the long-running gag that, for all its wondrous abilities, the trusty screwdriver simply doesn't do wood. This joke ran throughout the entirety of Stephen Moffat's time in charge, and has entered popular culture as one of the most well-known phrases in the show. The question is though, why? why why doesn't it do wood? Series 8 pitted the Twelfth Doctor and Clara against a giant forest that covered the earth overnight. This naturally spells big trouble for the Sonic. After scanning a nearby tree, the Doctor notes that they have no circuits and no mechanism, and that the Sonic interacts with any form of communication you care to mention. Sadly, trees have no moving parts and don't communicate. In other words, the Sonic only works on machines and not on anything organic. If there was a robot with wooden casing, then it would work fine, but pure wood on its own? No chance. Maybe the Master should build an army of wooden monsters if they really want to come out on top. Why have none of the enemies ever thought of this? Seriously, you're missing a trick here. Number 2. It exists in real life. Sort of. Doctor Who has a weird habit of accidentally predicting our future. Things like NFTs, ice volcanoes, and tenth planets were all featured in the show before they became reality, and we might one day be able to add the Sonic to that list too. In 2012, scientists working at the University of Dundee in Scotland developed an ultrasonic device capable of not just moving items, but rotating them accurately. This breakthrough was hoped to give surgeons more freedom to use ultrasound to treat a number of conditions without the need to cut open the patient. 
efficient. While this real sonic screwdriver can't run thousands of calculations at the same time, it was still a landmark achievement in medical science. Like Doctor Who's own device, our sonic screwdriver is capable of much more than just spinning things around, said Dr. Mike McDonald of the Institute for Medical Science and Technology at Dundee. Doctor Who has been around for so long that its effects on everyday life are clear to see. Fingers crossed that the next Who-related invention is somebody figuring out how to make a fridge bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Unlimited snacks? Yes, please. Number 1. It's the TARDIS's sibling the first time the 10th Doctor met Martha Jones, he spent more time worrying about his broken screwdriver than he did about the well-being of her patients, which, to be honest, sums up their relationship quite nicely. 10 fried his favourite toy after leaving it in an x-ray machine, resulting in an actually quite cool variation of the Sonic, complete with some gnarly-looking burn damage. Concept artist Peter McKinstry, who also helped design the revamped Davros for the Series 4 finale, was tasked with bringing the burnt screwdriver to life. In doing so, he revealed an interesting detail of the device's backstory. Along with his concept art, McKinstry noted that he designed the innards of the Sonic, specifically those green crystals in the dome, as a nod to the 10th Doctor's green time rotor at the centre of his TARDIS's console. He refers to the Sonic as the TARDIS's little brother because they come from the same technology. Now, we've seen numerous times that the TARDIS can make a new Sonic screwdriver, but the idea of them having this almost symbiotic relationship is something that's yet to be explained explored, but sounds really cool. Imagine if the Sonic also comes to life one day, and then the Doctor fancies that too. I mean, that's got Moffat written all over it. And that's everything for this list, but since we've been talking about the TARDIS, which let's be honest is the Doctor's other favourite gadget, why not check out every TARDIS interior ranked, and you can let us know in the comments of that video whether you agree with our ranking or not. In the meantime, I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of Riversong herself, goodbye sweeties.